following is part two of our discussion of Python functions, conditional statements, and uh, loops. We want to look at the difference between uh, scope and functions, especially local versus global variables. Variables that are defined inside of a function are only visible inside the function. They're called local variables. Variables that are defined outside of a function are visible inside functions, and they're called global variables. As an example, if we set a equals 5.5, then define a function f3 of x, and then define a variable b equals 66, and then call the function f3 with some value 2.2, then both a and b that are defined outside of the function are visible inside the function statement, and we can see that by printing a, a print statement inside the function statement. <clears throat> <clears throat> Another example, here we say b equals 77 and then define a function f4 and then inside the function we declare, we define b equals 88 and then print the variable, the value of b inside the function. In this case, because we're defining b inside the function, b will have local scope and is not the same b as the one defined above. So these are different values, and we can see that because when we, inside the function, when we print the value of b, we get 88. So here we define b to be 77, then we call the function, in, and when we call the function, b is assigned 88, this was a local value of b, then we print that value, and then we print the outside value. And we can see what happens to the uh, output. The value of b that is inside the function is um, 88, whereas the value of b when we print it outside has not changed. It's still 77. So these are two different values of b. We want to have a dis, uh, quick note on mutable versus immutable variables and passing by reference in functions. So how variables are passed to functions. This can be a little bit tricky. And uh, there's a nice website that's listed here for reference. Um, the website is here, and they do a nice job of describing how these uh, concepts work in Python. And it's the basis, that website's the basis for the description listed here. In most languages, when we make a variable, we're making a little box in computer memory that is given the variable name. And that box holds the value of the variable. So if we do x equals 5, y equals 6, we're making two boxes labeled x and y with values 5 and 6 put in the boxes. Then suppose we do x equals y. What we're doing is saying take the value that's in y's box and put it in x's box. So this makes, um, this makes sense. In Python, things are a little bit different. We don't want to think about a variable that is a box but rather an object. So we don't think of x and y, we think of the objects 5 and 6. The variables x and y can be considered tags on the object or references to the object. So this fundamental thing is the object 5 or the object 6 and the variables x and y are more like tags on those variables. So when we do x equals 5 and y equals 6 we're making the object 5 and the object 6 and tagging them with the names x and y. If we do something like x equals y then, what we're saying is take the object 6, which is tagged by y, and tag it with x. So now the object 6 will be tagged by both x and y, but we only have one object 6. You can also think of a tag as an object reference. So x equals 5 is saying that x is like a reference to object 5. In Python, the id function shows the computer memory location. So we can see if we do id x, then it shows us the memory location for the object that is tagged by the, the variable x. In the example here, we can do x equals 5, y equals 6, and then we can print the id for x and y. And when we do that, we can see the memory location here, a big string of numbers. If we look at the last few numbers, 44 and 20, then we can see that the object 5 is 44 and the object 6 is stored in location 20 and that makes sense. If we then do x equals y and then print the location for x and y we can see that 
In fact, they are the same location because both X and Y tag the same object, so they're in the same spot. They're both referring to the object 6. This is different than in other languages. In, in other languages, when we print IDX and IDY, uh, we'd always get the same bins for X and the different bin for Y. <clears throat> so immutable objects cannot be changed. We would say that 5 and 6 are immutable. They're 5. 5 can't be changed. If you make 5, 6, it's a completely different object. A string like S equals quote some string is also immutable. Some string is the object. If you then said S equals quote some other string, well you wouldn't be you would be basically saying, let's tag a different object, some other string, with the tag S. It's not like having a bin, a box for S, that contains the value some string. And then when we say S equals some other string, the same box has the value some other string. That's not what we're doing. We are making a completely different object, some other string, and tagging it with S. In, uh, conversely, mutable objects can be changed. An example is an array. So we haven't talked about arrays yet, we will shortly, but an example is x equals bracket 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. x basically is an object that contains uh, space for, in this case, five objects, and they have different values, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In this case, x is a mutable object. We can change the 3 to a 22, and if we do that, then we haven't changed fundamentally the object x. The object, this array object is still the same object, but uh, the value 22 is different. So before, with a string, if we have string versus some string versus some other string, those are completely separate objects. Here, this is the object, and we can store different values in its different slots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we can make 3 a 22 and it's the same memory location. We can see that with ID. So if we do X is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and print the ID, it's 32. If we change element 3 to be 22, then the object that's tagged by X is still the same thing, 32. Okay. When we pass arguments to functions, object references are passed by value. So this is a really important statement, but we can start to see what that means when we look at an example. So for immutable objects, nothing special happens, and we kind of get the behavior that we're used to with other languages. Suppose we have an object called a string object stash, and we tag it with the variable name ss. Then we can print ss and we get stash. Okay. We can print the id for it, id ss, and we get this location 20. Now let's define a function that accepts a string object, and we'll call it s. And when we go into the function, we'll print its location, the object s. Okay? We're going to then um, uh, reassign it to a, string, a different string object called mash, and then we'll print the id of s again and see that its location changes. Okay? So uh, when we call the function f5ss, first thing we see is the location and we can well the first thing that happens when we print the output statements is we look at the ID so stash is stored as SS and the ID is the location of this object at stash it's in location 20 then we call the function okay? we call the function and inside the function we print the ID for s and here SS becomes s but it's the same object. So that means that object references are passed by value. We have um, s location 20, the object stash is now the same, th the same object when we print the ID for s. Now when we set s equals mash and then print the ID for s, it's a new one because mash is a different object and that's what we see. Okay. And then at the very end, we can print SS again, and SS, which originally pointed to stash, hasn't changed because SS still tags.
tags the same object, 20. So we have 20 is SS. Then we call the function, and we uh, inside the function we look at the ID for S, which also tags stash, and it's 20. Then we say S is mash, which is a new object, and now the, uh, the uh, ID is 4. It's a different object, mash. Then at the very end, we look at SS again, it's still stash. So nothing special happens. We pass it in, it's a different, it effectively is like a different variable, and when we assign to it or do whatever to it, it's only affected inside the function. Now consider in contrast a mutable object, like an array. <clears throat> in this case, we define a function f6, and then we create the array xx. We print its ID, so 40 is pointing to, is the memory location for the object at this list object that's tagged by xx. Um, then we call the function f6, and inside the function we look at the ID, so now that object is tagged by x, and we print its ID, and it's the same x object, 40. Then we change one of the elements, 22, and it's the same object, 40. And then when we're done, we ID xx again, and it's the same object, 40. So in all cases, it's the same object. So if I pass an array to a function, and then change the array inside the function, the array is changed outside the function, because it's always the same object. So this is what we call in most languages passing something by reference. We pass the object into the function, operate on the object, and the object is changed outside of the function. This can be really useful because it means you don't necessarily have to return the array. You can just pass the array in and operate on it, and it's operated on outside of the function. So that can be um, fairly useful. This can be a, a tricky subject to understand, and uh, I recommend that you play around with it and read through the functions, the description, read the description carefully, and then look at the examples carefully to make sure that you understand how these concepts work. But in practice, what it really means is when you pass a, a, an immutable object, like 5 or 6, uh, in other languages, it's like passing it by value, and it behaves as if it was a separate object. When you pass a mutable object like x, it behaves as if it was being passed by reference. This is a, a particularly important uh, concept that can be a real uh, point for problems if you're not careful. So later on, we'll look at NumPy. Let's try import NumPy as np. And then we'll create x, we'll create a, an array y equals np dot array one, two, three, four. And we can look at y, we've just created an array y. Suppose we make an array z equals y. The important thing is in many languages you would expect to have two different arrays. You'd expect to have an array y and an array z. What happens if I go, if I print y? and then print z. Okay, I get the same values. Now let's suppose we change y. Let's go y0 equals 100, and then print y, and then print z. Notice that we, ch we just changed y, but because y and z both tag the same object, then when we change the first element from 1 to 100, it changed both y and z. And this can cause major problems if you set one array to another. You're not really creating a separate array. You're just tagging the same array with a different variable. So if you want separate arrays, you need to do something like, um, let's do y equals z equals y dot copy. Now, when we execute this, you can see that the z hasn't changed because when we do z equals y dot copy, we're making a separate object. Now z and y both tag different objects, not the same object. So that when we change the first element of y, we're not changing z. And so you'll want to make sure you're conscientious about this idea um, when you go uh, writing, uh, especially arrays.